one win away from your fantasy football championship week, and we have all your questions to help you get there. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Um, (laughs) Wow, I just had a bomb dropped right before the show. But why not? I yeah. mean, that's this is just um, AndyVersusJosh.com. That is now a website that I just learned exists. Did you, Deucers, know anything about this? Well, I was here with Josh a little earlier today, and he, you know, he couldn't help help himself. He no. he definitely had to tell me about it. And <laughs> so apparently, uh, good versus evil. He has set up a website. You can go vote on who you think will win. Oh man! Between me and Josh, it's <laughs> it's it's really well done. It is well done. Um, oh, sweet mercy. Yeah, you just found it, didn't I you? I just, you can't click. Okay. <laughs> you can't, you're supposed to vote, <laughs> and you can't click Andy wins. All right, well, that's, and then if you click Josh wins, it says, excellent choice, you beautiful genius. 100% of people agree Josh is too. Oh, okay. man. This is pretty good. That's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's well funny. done. Oh, man. I've been clicking Andy wins so many times that I can't do it. It won't let me. Um, <laughs> you almost got it. All right. Well done, Josh. I, I, um, Your rosters are up there? Yeah, although mine is mine's going to be a little different than that. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm saving some surprises. But uh, we've got... We've got a good show for you today. We got hungry for more NFL news. The Thursday night preview. Josh has been, he's working hard to turn the tide in our matchup via, like you know, printouts. And Which, considering he's never worked hard at any day in his life. Right. Thank you. I don't know what's going on. So it's a really weird feeling to see him uh, p- putting effort into things. So, so how many people in this company did I pay to make this website to troll me? At least two. Because I know Josh can't build this. <laughs> no, Josh did not. <laughs> There's no way site. he can build this. This is a well-done site. Well, um, I know that the, the tilt is beginning. The decision – I mean, we have uh, our manager who famously lost four title games that he was in. <laughs> famously? Famously. To us. Um, famously. No, no, no. I, I'm talking about he, he had four leagues. He was in the title game right. in all four leagues. And – he lost all four a few years ago, and he is—he's in the playoffs with four teams, and it's like he doesn't want to be there. Yeah, <laughs> he's because he's like, he knows the torture. He's tilting off. I mean, the Jason, face of this earth. Imagine how free you are today. Oh man, <laughs> oh I want to tilt, uh, but I can't. I can't now listen, I, Jason's all business up top, but I want the people on YouTube to understand mm. what's down below the party down below. Uh, you've got some really Whoa, colorful, we're stand up? <laughs> really colorful shorts on today. Are those pickleball shorts? Yeah, I'm uh, okay. ready to go do some exercise. Straight into pickleball. Sorry, it's, everybody. It's rainy outside, so I got to be in shorts and a t-shirt. <laughs> That's what I was going to mention. Is it is pour? It's been pouring it's rain. raining, yeah. and Jason's in shorts and a t-shirt. I'm in rain weather, my man. <laughs> you can follow the show at the FF Ballers. Uh, we've got a hungry for more segment momentarily. A couple of things at the top. New Dynasty podcast released today. A prospect preview for 2024 and some Dynasty Christmas wishes. Mm -hmm. And I have not heard this episode. It just released. I can almost bet that one of the Dynasty Christmas wishes is the removal of Arthur Smith from the earth. Or maybe just from the team. I will not confirm nor deny. Yeah. Yeah, so... um, But yeah. But yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, one other reminder, footclangiveaway.com. We're giving away a signed Travis Etienne jersey. And that is free to enter over there, so you can check that out. Shout out to the Foot Clan, by the way. Everybody supporting the show at jointhefoot.com, we appreciate you. Uh, you get that bonus episode every week. When we go down from five episodes a week to two a week after the NFL season or after the fantasy season, you can catch an extra episode over there at jointhefoot.com. 
Let's jump in. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. All right, we've had them flashes, we've had them nibbles, we've had those teasing performances. Who is your Hungry for More candidate for this week? What are you rooting for, Mike? Uh, I'm going to jump in here because I was so happy to see it. I'm sure many others, if you were able to get through with Ken Bone Walker the third, well, don't shake your head. At that that's good stuff. Ken Bone Walker the third. Yeah. Uh, this was great. He looked amazing. Yeah, we had 22 opportunities, over 100 total yards, a touchdown. The running back eight, and he's. It's. It was it's his been show. A, it's been it a was very his show. It's been a, a very strange season for for Walker of you know, the the drafting of Charbonnet. Definitely, you know, brought his draft stock down. Of what is what's the true ceiling for for Ken Walker, and then all of that was looked like that was just absolute hogwash, and it was a huge miss by by if if you had faded Ken Walker because Charbonnet was there. Walker was incredible to start. Then, as he does, he kind of gets banged up. Charbonnet's starting to be like a fifty percent snap guy. It looks like the timeshare is actually happening. Walker looks atrocious just two weeks ago. And then this was like, oh, we are back. This is a guy who is very healthy. He's ready to go for the stretch run. He gets to play against Tennessee, which Tennessee's run defense has really fallen apart. 95-plus rushing yards in three of four games, giving up top 12 performances to Singletary, Mostert, Chuba Hubbard. And, I mean, the force missed tackles are – are elite at this point for Ken Walker, what what he's putting out there on the field. So I am I am very hungry for a playoff run here with uh, KBW. Yeah, he looked outstanding. I mean, we were all worried, like, is he, is I, is I he healthy was, enough? I was super worried. And he just – he played great. And I assume everybody here got to see Peach Cobbler. Oh, yeah. Pete Carroll's uh, hyped up that man speech. Was, he was – getting wow. after it i mean for a 72 year old he was, if i was, was that awesome. youthful at 72 i'd be a lucky man i if mean i was that youthful at 41 <laughs> i would be a lucky man yeah it, it's crazy i and mike i feel like for your dynasty team with ken walker you it's like you found potentially a playoff star yeah. at the bottom of your bench i mean this was not a player you were really excited about for the playoffs and uh, you made it through and now you know you can have a little confidence that this mm -hmm. team is willing to ride that out. I mean, we should get Geno Smith back. So, you know, the offense should have both facets it, it, at least more uh, consistently. But yeah, I like that. Hungry for more Kenneth Walker and the time is right. He is the um, potentially inverse Eckler of the mm, season. Sure. Uh, I'm going to go with Ty Chandler. This was almost mine. Yeah, I mean, so this, was, it up. this was the first 100-yard rushing game by a Viking in more than a year and it's the first one Ty Chandler got to start. So he had a huge week, 23 for 132 and a touchdown, four targets, 81% of snaps. Um, Kevin O'Connell came out and said the role, you know, he is ascending to is something we had in our minds when we brought him here. We'll continue to do everything to get him valuable touches, make him a big part of the offense. They're fighting for the playoffs. And, you know, zero touchdowns in 11 goal-to-go carries for Alexander Madison over the course of the entire year. Ty Chandler got two goal-to-go carries, two touchdowns. And – Detroit, Green Bay, both at home, coming up. I think Ty Chandler, we don't know the status of Madison for this week. Correct. But I do trust Ty Chandler again this week. Yeah. yeah. I, you say either way. Like I think that if Madison does actually play, I like it. that dynasty team that I, I have, I have Madison and Chandler. If they both play, I'm going to play, at this point, I will play Ty Chandler over Alexander Madison. It's not just the snaps, the 81% of snaps that's glorious but l listen to this 96 percent of the running back attempts 100 percent of the running back targets I mean, that is a a a, a work load that very very few running backs ever see and the guy has juice yes yeah. he, he has home run ability he's getting all that work i mean i i don't care who he's going to play against if you're giving me those opportunities with the athletic upside is 
he looks like a great player. That, that, that's the the key to me, Andy. You constantly said during the draft season. What did what did you always say about Alexander Madison? I mean, I there's lots of different <laughs> words I use to describe his plotting, kind of unexciting, uh, barely yard gaining style. Yeah, I mean, it was just like your your, your thing was he's got opportunity. Mm -hmm. It looks like he could be a good draft pick because he's the guy in the absence of Dalvin Cook. Your problem with him was always he's just not that good. And Ty Chandler looks like he's got juice behind him. You you watch both those guys get a handoff. <clears throat> yeah. You go, oh, I know who's got the chance to make something special happen here easier. That would be Ty Chandler. So I like that one. Um, my hungry for more player this week is a guy who's been eaten the last two weeks. Hunter. Henry. All right. Now, we had a Hunter Henry in the Scotty Fish playoffs, and in that league, you get rewarded. Uh, it's a tight end premium, and you get rewarded for first downs, and Hunter Henry is who Bailey Zappi is looking for when they need to move the sticks because he was a first down machine. In week 15, he had nine targets against Kansas City, was seven for 66 with a touchdown. Now, he left that fourth quarter with a knee injury at the end, or that was what it was feared to be. It appears that it is just a left thigh contusion. He says he's okay, but he's been hot, and he's been hot with Bailey Zappi. Like, just zap, zap, zap. He's yeah. he's he's throwing the ball um, to Hunter Henry. He's looking for him. He had, obviously, two touchdowns. Uh, two weeks ago, a touchdown this last week, and now you've got the literal best matchup in schedule-adjusted fantasy points allowed to the tight end position against Denver. You watched uh, Sam Laporta throw a hat trick on him last week with the three tutties. Hunter Henry looks with Bailey Zappi to be set up for success. You don't know if Juju Smith-Schuster is going to be out there. I, I don't think he's back this week, so I'm, I'm hungry for more. This is I think a good playoff uh, player to plug into your lineup, and he's really had kind of an ugly sandwich because he started yeah. the season, you know, with two top three performances, and then he's kind of lulled, and now he's back with the last two weeks, two top three performances. Delicious bread, though. Yes, yes, the bread is it's uh, full of sugar. Oh, he's your favorite part of a sandwich. Bread is my favorite part of the. Well, I don't know that that's true. I love meat. Favorite part of a Danish is what you used to yeah. say. Yeah. You ever made a Danish sandwich? <gasps> some cheese Danishes with some meat between it. Hey, Danish can't stop me from a good time. <laughs> Filet Danish. Ooh. Would you go chicken? Would you go roast beef, pastrami? If you were really trying to pull it off, yeah, I do. It's a honey baked ham. Yeah, a ham. Okay, you gotta have some sweetness in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Jason he, knows that I'm. You, you uh -huh. both were immediately ham. So. Yeah. Well, because right. it's the right answer. Yeah. What are you going to put turkey? What an idiot. No. What's that, a turkey Danish sandwich? <laughs> Do you even know what you're doing? I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to eat that. <laughs> Save you from it. Uh, that was Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Get almost, almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. A cornerback. Nope. Baby back ribs. Yeah. Order now on the app. Product availability may vary by region. See the app for details. You probably won't find a Danish sandwich <laughs> on there. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Can I just share a really brief secret with just the two of you guys, no one else? All right. Yeah, if you whisper. I can't lose to Josh. I agree. I really need to beat him. Yeah. I don't want to have to fire somebody <laughs> for cause. <laughs> I just can't lose to my brother-in-law. Yeah, and man, you you think he's going to beat me? I I think he's got you on the matchups this I know, week. That, I know, I know. that stack you built for him against Arizona. The, the but this is the, more... that's the way it's supposed to work. Yes. He's set up for the stack. Yes, that I built for him, and then he should. And he's set up for it success. Should collapse. Go Cardinals. He's supposed to beat you in this matchup, and and that's where the story yes. of his evil yes. comes back and the comeuppance is paid and the good guy wins. <sighs> and guy. for the first time... the good guy always wins, right? For, yeah. I mean, the, the well, first time in my fantasy football life, which is, you know, uh, whatever, 20 years, you're the good guy, Andy. Hmm. You're the good guy. You're the one I'm rooting for. How's that feel? 
Feels feels good. Yeah. Feels different. Yeah. Feels well, real strange. Yeah. I'm like all on Team Andy here. All right. Texans quarterback C.J. Stroud likely to miss Week 16 against the Browns. That's a bummer. That uh, that certainly affects a lot of players. You know, I, I did was... I did leave a note for Josh because of this news. You know, the Captain America before and after. Yes, that was uh, Nico Collins with and without C.J. Mm. Stroud, and I did leave that on his desk. It's a huge, huge impact on. I think the uh, obviously the confidence you'd have in like a Noah Brown start or a Nico start. Also, the Browns' defense. Mm -hmm. You and I have different opinions on whether Flacco is still viable, though. Well, I don't think he's not viable. I, I, I believe what you were saying, where they're struggling to run the ball. I think Flacco throws the ball forty times. I, I, I you know, that's fine. But I, I think the upside of a shootout. Yeah, that's not happening. Is taken away, yeah, that's and, not and that was the hope when you look at the Houston matchup. Is that all of a sudden C.J. Stroud's going to go out there and put up thirty-five points? And he's going to score quickly, and then Cleveland's going to have the ball. You know that kind so talk of to me. game that you want to get into, but that won't happen. So maybe the shootout's off the table. But talk to me about like a player that's coming off a huge opportunity week in Devin Singletary with Case Keenum. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the game plan was you're you're not going to put as much on Case Keenum's plate as you would C.J. Stroud's. The weapons in the passing game weren't necessarily available. Devin Singletary is going to be going up against a defensive front in Cleveland. That's a problem. So we've seen Singletary when he's had huge snap opportunities against like Tampa, for example, struggled immensely. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty fearful about just chasing the 21 from last week and expecting it to replicate here against the de uh, the Cleveland defense. I, I'm curious what you two think. Yeah, I well, I, I don't think he's going to have as much success as last week, but um, Tennessee has a pretty solid run defense, and that's who he faced last week. Uh, I think they're getting it together, and if you just look at his efficiency, um, sweet mercy, he's he's been really, really good. 4.7 a carry, 5 a carry, 4.5 a carry, 5.1, 5. five. Like, he's been very, very efficient. Um, I will say that it's been a while since they've faced a yeah, front as good as Cleveland. So that stretch run, Cincinnati, Arizona, Jacksonville, Denver, the Jets. Jacksonville's got a good run defense, and Tennessee's got a good run defense. The others are... Tennessee had opposite. a good run defense. Yeah, they've been giving it up a little bit more on the ground, but uh, so it'll be a test. And I, but I think you could be confident in the volume, right? I, I believe. What about he, Henry? Derrick Henry versus Devin Singletary. Oh gosh, Henry off of a bad week. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely play Henry over Singletary. Okay. Yeah, the, Henry's week was. They're underdogs. Absolutely horrific and terrible, but I mean, if you've watched Derrick Henry for a long enough time. The, it works out. Yeah, it just it works out, and he he We've, plays like that. He gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage so much, and he always does. He just never had the good runs last week. We just he's had a few of those this year. Like also don't know that a, quarterback situation, right? What about Bijan? Oh, Bijan or Singletary? Bijan is I, a I'd, phenomenal star. I this would week. play Bijan. Phenomenal, huh? <laughs> he is. He is absolutely a phenomenal start this week. Bijan is – I know that he – I mean, he's coming off of his Negative worst game. Point one. Yeah, his worst game is uh, of his short career. But there's, See, if, I, if you got through it and you've got Bijan in the playoffs, there is – I have extreme confidence. Mike, do you have extreme confidence in no, Bijan? No. You can never – I can never have extreme confidence in Arthur, but I would play – See, that's over the, Singletary. The, the, the other part of the equation is he did only gain 11 yards on seven opportunities and he fumbled. Yeah. So there is some accountability for Bijan himself. Keenan Allen did not practice on Tuesday. He was working on the side with trainers. Today's a big day for any possible hope of him starting on Saturday. Jamar Chase can miss the next two weeks. Cool. Also known as the rest of your fantasy season. Yeah. Geno Smith will practice and play this week against the Titans. Geno Smith returning, and uh, that's from Pete Carroll. Doug Peterson said Trevor Lawrence remains in the concussion protocol. Zay Jones, week to week. I think they're still optimistic about Trevor Lawrence playing. Yeah, it seems like he's progressing through it, which is what you want to see. If he's progressing through it, you've got a shot to play that week. Uh, Zach Wilson seems unlikely to play in week 16 against the Commanders due to the concussion, so you'll probably see uh, some sad performance from Trevor Simeon. Trevor in there. The Colts officially signed Tyler Goodson to the active roster. That he, Really? He, he stepped in at running back last week along with Trey Sermon. Zach Moss with the shoulder. Hmm. 
I mean, you have two banged up guys at the top of the depth chart is what the situation is. Yeah, it's just Zach moving Moss's shoulder, Jonathan Taylor's thumb. I I mean, here's your possibilities for the week. You could have Jonathan Taylor back with no Zach Moss. Mm -hmm. You could have Zach Moss back with no Jonathan Taylor. Mm -hmm. And you could have both of them playing with injuries. You, you could have neither of them playing Trey and Sermon. have Trey Sermon. Or you could have neither of them playing and it turns out it's Tyler Goodson that you want. Like, there, <laughs> this is this is a, a wild week for that running back room. Yeah, that's that's crazy. So we'll, we'll monitor that. I know um, a lot of people want Jonathan Taylor back as fast as possible. And then Falcons owner Arthur Blank said the team is going to let the season play out and go from there on whether Arthur Smith returns. Just lose, baby. Just lose those games, Arthur. Could you imagine? Let's just throw this out. Arthur Smith is let go at the end of this year. And they hire an offensive guy who's, you know, they, they go in whoever whoever's the new hotness they uh you know they get uh what is it ben johnson um from detroit yeah from detroit sure. and bring him in how excited would you be about the prospects of pretty excited of the weapons they have not excited till they had a quarterback that's fair that is not that excited is till they have somebody that you that you're not pivoting between taylor Hyde and key four i mean how excited were you for the options in washington when they brought in eric Bieniemy this offseason I think the excitement was through the roof. Yeah. I mean, Jahan that's, Dotson and Terry McLaurin. And, that's fair. And uh, they did not produce. So what if it's Justin Fields? Yeah, you'd be excited. Okay. With Kyler Murray. I mean, I think the offense that I'm most excited about this offseason getting a quarterback is Minnesota, without question. I think Minnesota would, you know, the implications for Jefferson, Addison, Hawkinson, all the Suns. Mm-hmm. The, and, and the potential for that defense on that team, that's the one where it's like if Kyler lands there. It could still be Kirk. I don't think so. No? Really? I don't think so. I mean, yes, it could still be. I, I'm not denying the possibilities, but I'm just – I think that they're going to try to find a future there. With two, two young wide receivers like that, Kirk Cousins, a one-year deal, I mean, maybe. But I, I think that's the home for someone like Kyler. And hmm. you would be so excited about that. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break. Back with the TNF preview. All right. Uh, somehow, some way, semifinal week is getting ready to go, getting ready to start. So let's talk about Thursday. Thursday night breakdown. The New Orleans Saints at seven and seven take on the seven and seven Los Angeles Rams. So many sevens. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Rams minus four at home. The over under is forty five and a half. It's been bet up. You like to see it. It's now the fourth highest over under of the week. I like that. Derek Carr, Matthew Stafford. I thought you were going to go, Derek Carr, don't like that. <laughs> well, he should have Chris Olave back, expected to play. I don't. We didn't mention that in the news, but we should have. Uh, Chris Olave, expected to return. That's good for the offense, Rashid Shahid. I mean, when you look at the weapons being healthy, I don't think we've seen this uh, in, in a long time. Olave and Shahid and Kamara uh, and Taysom Hill healthy, Juwan Johnson back. I think it's going to be a pretty good game. I really do. Derek Carr. Had a three-touchdown performance last week. It was his best fantasy game of the season. Alvin Kamara has not had a fantasy week under nine fantasy points. He's been a double-digit machine. And the thing is, is the Rams' defense, when you look at, like, we have a stream finder tool that's part of the Foot Clan premium tools. It's my favorite tool to use uh, in terms of finding matchups because you can limit it to the last three weeks, looking at the defensive performances, last five, last eight. The Rams have been absolutely dominant against the running game. So it's good that Alvin Kamara is a receiver. Um, that's that's part of the equation there. So, you know, from a start-sit decision, both teams fighting for the playoffs, both teams at 500. You know, Taysom Hill last week, very disappointing. That would be a hesitation for me, but the main core offensive pieces for 
the Saints and Kamara and Olave, I think you're putting right back out there. Yeah, I, I think you're going to play most of the big names here, and you're just excited and hopeful that it can become a shootout. With the way that Derek Carr and Stafford are playing, like I, I think I think these are two good defenses, right? And you could see like a hard fought, difficult, sadly lower scoring game because of the defenses that are stepping up. But I think on prime time, these two quarterbacks, they're playing well enough. Stafford's been playing very, very good. I, I think the Rams are looking like a uh, you know, a playoff bound team to me. And so if these two quarterbacks get going, you could have this hit the over and have a really good game. But you're going to start Cooper Cup. You're going to start Puka. You're going to start Kyron. That's my surprise bust of the week. Who? Puka? I'm, I'm worried about Puka because I, the Saints on the year, number one against wideouts, number four uh, in schedule adjusted. And because you've had two of four performances from Puka that were underwhelming, I guess I'm a little worried that there becomes a Cooper Cup like dependency going on. Like He was banged up. That's, I'm not saying no, you no, don't no. start Puka, but that is my one. Like, if I if someone busted in this game, that is my worry. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it certainly with how the Saints defense has not been giving up fantasy points to the wide receiver, it, it scares you to say, well, both Puka and Cooper Cup are going to have great games. Uh, it might not be enough to go around. That being said, I I just can't imagine being able to bench either guy. Last week, Puka was a little bit disappointing, but he still had eight targets, fifty yards was targeted in the red zone. He, the The nice thing is that they do look his direction. They look for both these guys in the red zone. Um, whoever doesn't get a touchdown, I think maybe you'll be a little bit disappointed with. I mean, Cooper Cup last week was, you know, eight for 111 and a touchdown. That's fantastic. But it was a 62-yard touchdown. So, I mean, like, overall, they would – it was just one the, – the one big play happened to go to Cooper Cup. If the one big play goes to Puka – Tutu Awa will, will be back as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, the matchup for Higby is great. You saw him get utilized with five targets again last week. That's the area the Saints give up a lot of fantasy points. You'd start Higby over Taysom Hill? Oh, man. I would. Yeah, I would. I The Taysom Hill, I don't know if last week, you know, you're coming back from injury, he was banged up. Um, it's his lowest snap since week one. Yeah, I mean, he, he after missing – he had 13 rushing attempts in week 13. Right. Then he got hurt, and then he had one last week. So things are kind of just up in the air. I don't know. I think I I think that one's tough. <laughs> I think I if I had a surprise good performance, it would be Higby for the week. So I think I would go Higby. Um, and – what about you guys have lots no, of thoughts? About no, it's it's just I'm trying to process you actually supporting Tyler Higby. It's very, very strange. It's it's off brand for yeah. you, Andy. Yeah, I mean so I don't have to do it. We no, can... well you already did. I'm just I'm okay. taking it back. Obviously, Demarcus Robinson is yeah. oh, deleted with yeah. uh, Tutu Atwell being you know full participant in practice. Um, I I think the real the only major question is just like would you want to throw a dart at Rashid Shahid or not even look that way? Because Chris Olave, you're playing. Cooper Cup, you're playing. Puka, you're playing. Kamara, you're playing. Kyron, you're playing. Like, no one's going to bench any of those guys. And I don't. I I'm, just don't know if there's anyone else that matters. I mean, I guess the real question here is just the quarterbacks. Yeah, Do you the, start Stafford? Yeah, the matchup doesn't look great for Stafford. Saints defense eighth on the year or in the last six weeks against quarterbacks. We know that they can win with a recipe of Kyron Williams and – you know, moving the ball between the 20s and running the football. Like, they have these drives. Sean McVay does it from time to time where it's eight runs in a row, ten runs in a row. Last week, Stafford was good, not great. But um, – Did you go Stafford or Flacco? I'd go Stafford. I would too. Okay. Gino I, or Stafford? I would go Stafford. Stafford's kind of been on a heater. He's not out there <laughs> scoring 35 fantasy points. But the last month, now that he's got his weapons back, now when you've got Puka – and Cooper Cup and Kyron all together. Stafford's been really, really good. The last uh, four weeks, 18.5 points, 23.7, 23.23.4. All four weeks, a top 12 quarterback on the week. So I, I'm okay playing Stafford. I, I'm not trying to, like, smash him in as the best play of the week, but if you've got those kind of streaming candidates, I would I would lean towards Stafford. Any other players you want to discuss from this game, Mike? This will kick off our semifinal week. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, 
I don't. Did we talk about Kyron? I mean, you just play him. He's really good. Yeah. Thir- 34 opportunities. It's all the opportunities mixed with the fact that he actually has juice. Like, he's a just a great player. He's just on the field constantly. 22, 26, 29, 34. So his opportunities have gone up every single week since returning from injury. Up. Old. 82% of the running back rush attempts, 90% of the running back rushing yards, 100% of the running back targets. He is everything in the running game. You know, old uh, third percentile speed score, Kyron Williams. See, that's, that's I mean, <laughs> it's just different. Remember the Kareem Hunt criticism coming yeah. into the league? Remember the Dalvin Cook criticism coming mm-hmm. into the league? Remember the Arian Foster criticism coming into the league? Remember the Peyton Hillis criticism yeah. coming into the league? There's there's like game speed. Hello. If you watch four years of a player dominate in college, maybe they're all right. Maybe. Especially if they play for a major conference. I'm not saying you don't want to see speed, but remember C.J. Spiller's speed? Remember yeah, Ronald very, Jones's speed? Yeah, very fast. Real fast guys. Need, need there's something else you need. It's just it's wild of where the remember Najee full- Harris's vision from last week. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe vision matters too. Oh, the full. Well, I don't know. I, be, That's not, like the twentieth video I've seen of Najee Harris, literally cutting away from an open part of the field as though it is a defender. He there's a he's on a bad eye drop medication. I don't know what's going on with Najee Harris. Of this was is he play with a, a real dark visor? I, I like think, oh, all the way dark. I think he's going for broken tackles. And, oh, he wants to break that oh, record. Okay. If you if you go up where there's no defenders, <laughs> there's no chance to break right. a tackle. <laughs> it's like when you go for the the big man misses the layup, just gets the O board real quick. Exactly. Add those boards. Yep. He's, he's just... missing a lot of layups. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. You saw that video though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He's. I uh, mean, which one? <laughs> it's sad. It's embarrassing. It's sad. It really is. All right. Into the mailbag we go. Bag. Bag. Ooh, yeah. I mean, you're right, Kyle. He's turning into a full butt runner. Yeah. A butt runner. He is. He runs into the butts. He's following his offensive line too closely. Don't mistake like movement and activity for progress down the field. He's not afraid to move. He'll juke right into that butt. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's it. Uh, visit the site and click on submit a question if you want to submit your own mailbag question or dial the voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. I blame you, Kyle, for that line of thinking. Right into it. Um, Here we go. Here's a voicemail. Hey, ballers. Love the show. I'm just wondering if I should be concerned about playing Brees Hall or Garrett Wilson now that the Jets are out of playoff contention. Full PPR early. Thanks. Bye. Um, you should be worried about them with no regard to their playoff positioning because the offense is, is going to have a backup quarterback. Brees Hall has, has had disappearing acts. He can't produce on the ground. The offensive line is terrible. None of that is playoff contention related. I, I may pivot it like my initial – Start of the week was Garrett Wilson this week, but I was hoping Zach Wilson would play because I did that a couple of weeks ago and it worked out. and And the matchup is great this week. Yeah, the Manders like those two players should be played based on the matchup. Yeah. I'm just I am a little nervous with Mannion behind center. Yeah, it's it's not what you want, and and I don't think it's a guarantee that Zach Wilson won't play this week. But Simeon. That's, did you say Mannion? He did say Sean Mannion. What's the difference? <laughs> you, got, you got that Mannion PTSD. What's the, what's the difference? Um, yeah, I, I I think that you should start those players. The, the Washington commanders have just been giving up fantasy points to all who play against them right now. Uh, so it would be really difficult to bench those two players based on this week's matchup. But I would bench... Garrett Wilson, if it's Simeon, uh, Simeon's. We're gonna. I'm gonna need some names. Well, listen, Simeon. Let me give you this stat because I had seen it. Simeon's off-target throw percentage is the worst of 56 eligible quarterbacks this year. Like 28 percent of his throws are off-target just to start, and um, 
like Garrett Wilson. I know, Mike, you're, you, you saying you need names says you have a Garrett Wilson decision to make. Uh, yeah. So th that's just my opinion on, on what I think the potential for this week is with Trevor Simeon. It's just if you're out, if it's three and out every possession, you just lose opportunities, and it drives you crazy when you watch this team. So maybe Brees Hall gets it done on the ground and they have more you know, sustained drives, but if you don't, I just feel like your your outcomes are so wide. Like you could have – you can't have a great game for Garrett Wilson, I don't think. I don't think you can score more than about 15 points. You can have a goosey game with Garrett Wilson. Yeah. So give me give me the names you want me to comment on. All right, let's go on. Uh, someone who can have a great game or a goose game. Drake London against the Colts. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take Drake London with Tra T uh, Taylor Heineke. I would as well. What about DeAndre Hopkins against the Seahawks? Yeah, I'll take Hopkins all day long. Okay. Uh, off of a huge game, Chris Godwin. What's that matchup? Uh, let me look it up. Jacksonville. Jacksonville, thank you. Um, yeah, I'll, t I'll play Godwin. I mean, yeah, the matchup should also be good. off of a huge game with a backup quarterback. Jordan Addison against Detroit. No, I'm not going to chase the double touchdowns there. I don't think. All right. But I mean, like, do you guys disagree? I mean, is that to me, Simeon is a tremendous downgrade from Zach Wilson. There's a downgrade from all other quarterbacks, but it's still better for Wilson. Yeah. It, to me, he is some of those names. I would I would start Garrett Wilson over, and and um, you know, I I would take others. Like I would start Garrett Wilson over. Chris Godwin. That Chris Godwin, I feel like we're chasing. We've had an entire season of him stinking. He's, you know, he had a great game last week. Uh, Garrett Wilson is so talented that he, one play could make it fantasy relevant. You could also have the situation where he just has 15 targets. Um, so I, you know, I don't, I don't see Garrett Wilson against the Manners as like a must bench with Trevor Simeon, but um, he's certainly someone that you maybe don't just lock into your lineup. You look at what your options are. You know, if you've got Rushy Rice, who's been sure really, really, yeah. really good, uh, you know, for a month. That's an easy one. Yeah, th That's then yeah, one. you can it's, you can bench him. It, like the the Dolphins they just they knew they had the Jets number last week. Like Trevor Simeon was awful, but Zach Wilson was equally awful in his short I mean, amount Trevor of time. Trevor Simeon's a 49% passer in his two two opportunities this, this year. Well, so, I mean, so it's like – Yeah. I mean, he was off the – he's off the bench for both of them. Yeah. A week of proper t preparation will get it done. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not trying to say I have full confidence in Trevor Simeon, just that Zach Wilson finished with – Negative fantasy points. Garrett as, Wilson as did Trevor Simeon. Garrett Wilson's uh, peak fantasy por performance of the entire year was two weeks ago against Houston. Yeah, and it was fifteen point six points. So that goes to my my point of like, that's not like that's your ceiling for Garrett Wilson. I would be very happy. With and that's 15 and points. that was the only game Simeon didn't play in the last three. Um, so it's it's tough. I mean. Garrett Wilson's on pace for 167 targets in this lost terrible year and a thousand yards. It's just your ceiling is is challenged, and so you know I think we laid it out there pretty good on your yep. decision making. I think Brees Hall's the one that has the softer, better opportunity. He had a good game. Um, what was it two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. That was yeah. Wilson too. That was Zach Wilson as well. well. It was. I don't know how you go from playing against Houston in the rain and put up 30 points, and your offense looks fantastic. And your defense completely shuts down C.J. Stroud, and then you lose thirty to zero against the Dolphins. It was a really bizarre twist. Pass rush, yeah. Uh, Brees Hall or David Montgomery as a follow up question from Jason Yada. That is a very very interesting question because I think Brees Hall's a great play this week. The matchup is great, and David Montgomery has a difficult matchup and has been less good. Minnesota well, is seeding so much work to Gibbs. Yeah, Minnesota is um, a really, really tough defense. So if you're looking at just the matchups, you go, oh, okay, it's Brees Hall. Now, on my League of Record team, I've got these two guys. Um, and this would be, for me, this would be an easy David Montgomery call. I'm with you on that. 100%. David Montgomery is 
a really, really solid player. His floor is so much higher. That's it. His ceiling is still hot. You know, who has a higher chance of scoring two touchdowns? Well, it's David Montgomery because they will score. The Lions. Jameer Gibbs, sorry. Well, sure. No, I, yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying as an offense, the ceiling doesn't really feel there with Brees Hall. His ceiling is, yeah, he, he's got an 80-yard touchdown reception. That's great. His entire fantasy game is good. But only one of these guys can go out there and have, you know, a, a large volume surprise of great ground utilization and multi-touchdowns. But then the floor, if you compare these two players, the floor of Brees Hall is, you know, the, the Jets lose 30 to nothing again and collapse and the offense doesn't work and Brees Hall is benched for health um, just like he was last week. The floor is scary with Brees Hall, and and I'm I'm all about playing Brees Hall this week. Yeah, I would, I would I'd go Hall over Montgomery. You, you would go Hall over Montgomery. Okay, yeah. I I would. The worst Montgomery's finished on the year was 25th on any week he started, which and was didn't get hurt. Double digit fantasy points that week as well. I mean, his floor is so high. Yeah, that's the that's the challenge. So I I get it. Those are both. I think both are just players you start this week, and we just leave it at that. What's up, ballers? Thanks to you guys, I'm in the semifinals in all four of my leagues, but I need some help. Am I crazy for wanting to start Joe Flacco this week over Patrick Patrick Mahomes? Thanks a lot. I take it easy, guys. Crazy? Joe, Joe Flacco over Patrick Mahomes. It was he couldn't even get out Mahomes. Yeah. He was just like I. Yeah, I don't know why I'm asking this question. The um, it, it's tough because normally, like we've got a five year, six year run of when you see Mahomes against the Raiders. You are salivating. I mean, you're getting the steak knife out. You're ready to ready to cut off a slab of fantasy points. When you see Mahomes at all, it doesn't matter the opponent. You got five years running of. You see Mahomes, you go. E I'm salivating. This is this is a filet mignon. So you've got salivated. Uh, you've got <laughs> a matchup where the Chiefs are ten point favorites. I like it. You also have Las Vegas, who who played them tough last time, and Las Vegas is eleventh against quarterbacks. And they, they do have, you know, a much better secondary than we've seen, and you don't have people that can beat it on Kansas City right now. Um, Their offensive engine is back, too. Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah. Yeah, and the over-under is 41 points. So, you know, when they played in Week 12, Mahomes was the quarterback eight. It was 20 fantasy points. Do you want to know the last time Patrick Mahomes – man, he had – he has one 30-point game on the year. Mm -hmm. Since week eight, Patrick Mahomes is averaging 14.5 fantasy points per game. Yeah, it's 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 been really bad. I don't and know And he played how, 100% of snaps. It's not like he's missing time. I don't know how I could possibly play Flacco no, over No, I couldn't either. That was, the, <laughs> over that, was the, that was the long, long story of why Patrick Mahomes, you still have to take the chance on him against Las Vegas in a get-right game. But, yeah, but it hasn't happened. No, since, since the bye week. You look back and, I mean, one single game where he's hit 20 fantasy points, it, it's been really, really bad. But he hasn't had a three-touchdown game since week seven. Yeah, uh, but he is Patrick Mahomes. You've got a storied, long career of scoring a bunch of touchdowns. If you had to – if I have to bet, like, the last three weeks, are they going to keep going how the previous four or five weeks have, or will he get it back together and the offense will start to look good heading into the playoffs – I'm always going to bet on Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I, I this is it's a weird math equation to me with Kansas City, and they don't have. I don't know how you make the case that they have players to do that with. That's my challenge. They need to just take. I mean, think about Kadarius it. Kadarius Tony off the field. You can't. Sky Moore just went to IR. You already lost. You if you played with ten. It would be better for your offense than playing with 11 if one of your 11 is Kadarius Toney who's going to bobble the okay. ball up and give it to the other team. So this is my point, though. Like, I don't see how you can produce enough fantasy points in that offense with Travis Kelsey struggling through the air. Jo I, I like Rashi Rice. He cannot carry an entire offense. He really can't. So who is it? Justin Watson? MVS? They need. No, we've seen what the. They don't is. have a player that when I mean you talked about it, you target Kadarius Tony. The ball's gonna get dropped. You hope dropped to the ground <laughs> is the best case scenario, because if he catches it, oh, he'll fumble man. it. If he bobbles it up, 
it'll be intercepted. Pour one out for all the people that traded for Tony going to Kansas City. Oh, man. Kadarius Tony's fantasy peak on the year was 7.9 fantasy points in week six. Kadarius Tony is um, he's on pace to rece- have 35 receptions and 221 pe- receiving yards. And cause about five turnovers. I mean, that's got to be like a Kyle Juszczyk kind of receiving line. <laughs> Jarek McKinnon is who they need. They really need to utilize him more in the passing game. He's such a valuable, capable Pass catching option for McKinnon. The, the is there anybody in the studio that will play Flacco? No, not in that case. Nope. I'm Kyle, a- do you have the courage? Never. No, no he's never. A, he says I'm a coward. Joe, Joe, I'm higher Joe Flacco. On Flacco than you guys are this week. Joe Flacco has um, I mean, the pass attempts. He and, and Joe Flacco has had multi touchdowns in every single game. Let's hope it continues, I, David yes. Najoku. And Amari Cooper. Saying that, I would still play Mahomes, but yeah. I, I understand the question. Kyle, an interesting... It's the turnovers from Flacco that erases his fantasy numbers. An interesting research thing for us to look up, because we probably don't know this, but has there ever been someone drafted in the first, traded in year two, and then like the career actually works out? Because I, I mean, I'm, I'm only Say, I'm thinking who of... Who are you thinking of? Well, Tony... Uh, and then Trent Richardson was the the two that came to mind. Drafted in the first, but then traded the next year. Yeah, um, that's yeah, a bad sign. Because if- uh, like the teams like we drafted you in the first. No, we're willing to trade you away. Yeah, I was trying to think of. Ex- I mean, obviously Claypool got dealt. That was a little bit. He was, le- a, second was a little rounder. bit later, and he's a second rounder. Boy, f- first rounders. Is that yeah. what you said? Yeah, this one. There's- Tony was a first. Oh yeah. And when when he got drafted in the first, everyone went what. And then doing? everybody saw him on the field, and they were like, yeah. whoa. Yeah, and then it was, oh, the Giants were really smart on this one. That was Tony? And then he got traded. And That's we not went, Wandale? What? They went Tony, Wandale back-to-back? Yeah, Wandale was a second. 20th pick in the draft. Boy, he, you know what it is? Is when you see him, you just it just feels like a yes. seventh-round pick. <laughs> I That's think, what it is. I, I, I think that Tyreek Hill created a career for Kadarius Tony. People have just tried like a jitterbug to find that like yeah exactly that, that that crazy short area explosive athlete and and you saw some of that from Kadarius Tony you see it and so yeah Jalen Waddle does it I mean it works for him yeah it, but, Jamison Williams will probably keep doing it um, I want to I want to go back to the Flacco Mahomes thing I just want to point out oh boy we've got three weeks of Flacco as the starter yeah uh-huh. The first week, he scored 17 points. That week, Patrick Mahomes scored 14 points. Oh, no. The second week, Flacco scored 21 points. That week, Mahomes scored 14 fantasy points. Mm -hmm. Last week, Flacco scored 20 fantasy points. Mahomes scored 17 fantasy points. So, he's averaging more. He's beat him every single week. Hit the adamantium button. Oh, no! Uh, All right, do you? Well, this is what we got. Unobtainium underpants. My my Smith can't handle working with Adam and I'm sorry, unobtainium. But you... that's the highest level that we have. Oh, I, we just, just put it on you, Jay. I'm just saying, yeah, those <laughs> the, were on you. The camera you. was on you when the drop happened. So. You've got them on right now. You can see them, actually. They're bright. <laughs> yeah. The uh, It would take so it, – it's an insane amount of courage. It's an un – anybody out there, anybody that's doing flack over Mahomes this week, I want to hear from you on Twitter. I have to know. But only if it works. <laughs> no, I want to know. <laughs> no, way. I want to know if you do have the courage to do it. And because this is not like I know people they would just do it for fun, but not in the playoffs. In the playoffs, yeah. you, you don't get to just do it for fun. You have to. You have to believe it. You have to put on the unobtainium underpants, guard thy loins <laughs> from the damage of Joe. Like Joe Flacco has uh, five five picks. He can get you right in the nards. He's got five picks and two fumbles, seven turnovers in three games. So those numbers would be much higher if he, if he didn't just turn into a pumpkin every uh, few plays. But are you saying with the when you laid that out, Jason? I know you don't want me to come back to you here. Are you saying you would do it? No, I mean, no. But I'm saying it does make sense. It's not as crazy or ludicrous as it sounds when you go, "Will you will you start you know old man off the street over Patrick Mahomes?" Um, it it would have been the right decision every single opportunity that Flacco's played this year. I, I, I still won't do it. All right. Rosie wants to know, do I start Gus Edwards or Najee Harris this week? 
The Gus Bus against San Francisco as a five-point road underdog. Oh, man. Najee Harris against Cincinnati, two-point home underdog. The Najee matchup is so much better, but... I have a strict policy with Najee. So you're going the Gus Bus? I have a strict policy with the Gus Bus. <laughs> no, which is the player more likely to actually score a touchdown? To me, it's Gus Edwards. That is... You have the injury to Keaton Mitchell that gives me more confidence in Gus. I'm going Gus. Yes. Ooh. We need a less enthusiastic horn that's on that not, Gus bus. That's not that enthusiastic. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's... That's super... Ex hit it again. That's happy. I mean, it just sounds kind of like a clown horn, though. Yeah, or, or a party bus. That's in a kid's cartoon. That's a bus coming down the street in a kid's <laughs> cartoon. We need something more somber from a... Like a bus that survived a, an apocalypse that's coming down the street. Beep. It has very little gasoline left in the tank. Are you guys both Najee or... No, I th I think with the, the Mitchell injury, I'm going to go with Gus. Now, if I threw in one more player, Justice Hill, does that change anything? I would go Gus over Justice Hill. What about Gustus Hill? If I could get both combined, I would play that <laughs> Hold player. on, hold on. Augustus Hill. Ooh. I'm in. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't get it. Uh, Saquon Barkley expanding. or Brandon Ayuk this week? Rahul wants to know. Both risky. Both have upside. Saquon takes on Philly. Saquon's an 11.5 point underdog. Saquon has, he finally had an efficiency struggle despite the matchups. He's had tough matchups on the ground in the past, but delivered with efficiency. This past week against New Orleans, it was terrible. Nine for 14. This week, they're in Philly. Philly's defensive front very good but just gave up 80 something yards Say, to Kenneth Walker yeah try and take the Walker performance as the confidence I would go oh I'd go Barkley I think someone else answered uh I I would go Barkley I, the the known volume is where I lean I know Brandon Ayuk has been great this whole year and I'm not sitting there saying you should bench Brandon Ayuk but the matchup against Baltimore you know they're they're number six on the season against wide receivers they don't usually give up a lot of points you're coming off of a game where Ayuk had three receptions and he can get it done with three receptions you know on a on a great ball uh, you know a bomb play but, but he, I well would, he should have got it done last week if Brock Purdy threw him better passes yeah so I, I mean I I just want to lean on the known volume of Saquon over Ayuk personally all right. Well, that is going to do it for today's episode. We have starts of the week tomorrow. Uh, I do like the fact that Andy versus Josh dot com. You put my name first because that makes more sense mm -hmm. from like a who will finish first this week. And it's VS for verse. Andy VS Josh dot com. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I spelled it. Would out. you have put versus V E R S U S? You would have thought that's, that's what that's... I typed when you said it was Andy really? versus Josh dot com. Well, hmm. I just typed what you know, the words you said. Hmm. No, when someone says versus it's VS period. Hmm. But you can't put a period there. <laughs> so, uh, th I therefore, just, I, I just it think out. you probably are in the minority of people that would have spelled the whole word out. That's all. Maybe. But uh, if now you no want to register will. that domain, you can. The other one. Yeah, Josh should have forwarded it. Uh, oh, we do have. Is this updated news, Kyle? What do we, we have updated kind of? Jonathan Taylor news? Uh, kind of. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Jonathan I don't Taylor, have the courage. This is from Shane Steichen. Taylor is progressing well. He will participate in the walkthrough today. Remains optimism that he can play. Mm. But he'll be evaluated on a daily basis. That's a lot of, I'm on this side of the river. <laughs> I'm on that side of the river. Not exactly the Mississippi. <laughs> I'm afraid of him. You're afraid of, of Jonathan Taylor? Yeah, yeah he should be. <laughs> All right. We'll continue stressing out tomorrow. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. FootClanGiveaway.com for a signed Travis Etienne jersey. We'll catch you tomorrow with our starts of the week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.